What up, what up, guys? What's going on? Welcome to episode number 17 of the Spun Today podcast. I am your host, Tony Ortiz. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, this is, like I said, episode number 17, No Strength Ave, another audiobook. Uh, I finally finished it, um, which I think my turnaround time is actually getting getting a lot better. The this story I wrote fairly quickly in comparison to like the gap in in between uh, the previous short story that I wrote, which uh, for those of you that don't know, you can read all these short stories at spuntoday.com forward slash short stories. Uh, this is a podcast that is motivated by writing. Um, I'm a shitty beginning writer, but this is uh, the purpose of the podcast is to kind of highlight the journey from developing upwards from a, a shitty no-name writer and uh, see where it goes. Also, I love podcasting and uh, decided to put the two together. So one of the types of episodes that I do is my attempt at uh, recording an actual professional quote-unquote sounding audiobook uh, based on those short stories. So for anybody that doesn't like it, it's just a short story. So it's not uh, too grueling. And uh, for those of you that are into audiobooks and shit like that, um, you know, it's a, it's a, might not, the content might not be all that great, but it's free and um, uh, it's out there for, for you guys to listen to. So the way that it's formatted is generally an intro where I just talk about the general shit um, uh, that's going on with me, and, uh, then the audiobook portion of it, uh, ended with an out, an outro, um, and yeah, that's pretty much it, that's for any of you new listeners out there, and, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, this story is, I'll tell you guys, like, where, where it came from, um, actually before that, I wanted to ask you guys if you might know uh, of any tips or anything like that because I am on the quest to find the perfect coffee for me. Um, I'm a coffee fanatic. I drink a shitload of coffee, but I am not uh, like a coffee connoisseur or something like that uh, by any stretch. I listened to an episode. I went back and re-listened to it again actually recently. Because I remember I enjoyed it the first time, but uh, an episode of uh, uh, the Joe Rogan Experience podcast, he had a guy on there who definitely was a coffee connoisseur, um, Peter Giuliano, uh, I think his name was. Not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but it was, if you guys can't believe it, a three-hour podcast all about coffee. So if anybody wants to listen, I mean, he goes into like the history of coffee and and uh, the fact that it's actually coffee is actually uh, a fruit. There's a coffee fruit, and um, what we uh, grind up and shit is like the seeds from coffee, uh, the seed from that that fruit, which is actually it looks like a like a grape looking like red fruit, uh, which is also edible. Um, and we grind grind up the seed from it, and you know that's what eventually becomes uh, the coffee that we drink and brew and stuff like that and he gets into like all the different types of like ways to brew it and the different uh, um, strains of coffee there's like thousands and thousands of like different strains of coffee um you know all different types of tastes and and textures and and shit like that and it it was pretty fascinating and got me um wanting to you know try different coffees i'm dominican so my uh uh brand of up uh not necessary of choice but i mean i do like it but the um type of coffee that i was exposed to is bustelo uh coffee any you know it's not i'm pretty sure it's not well i'm not positive but i don't think it's like grown in dr or anything like that but any Dominican worth his or her salt definitely has a Bustelo coffee in the cupboard. Um, it's pretty good coffee, but, you know, nothing nothing fancy or special. I'm looking for um, some variety, you know, to mix it up a little bit. So what I did do is I went to uh, Trader, uh, what's it, Trader Joe's 
and I was gonna start off with like the Kona coffees. So I read a couple of reviews, and they um they mentioned that that's you know uh, an accessible one that's that's pretty good, that's pretty decent. Um, supposedly like the the coffee from the Big Island in Hawaii uh, is supposed to be pretty dope. So I wanted to try that, but I wound up getting some other shit. Let me grab it really quick so I can tell you guys what it is. One second. I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. I didn't pause pause it or anything. Um, so I just uh, went to go grab it really quickly. It is... I, I wound up getting this one instead of uh, the Kona coffee that was there. Because this is a limited edition, supposedly. Um, it is Peaberry from Honduras. And I'm not a fan. <laughs> it wasn't... Uh, um, it's a medium roast, light bodied, and I don't know, just didn't like it, didn't do it for me. The way it is described is that it's a, it's light bodied with notes of cocoa, brown sugar, and butter, uh, which sounded pretty interesting and made me want to try it that much more, aside from the fact that they slapped a limited edition on the label, and it uh, got me on that. Um... But yeah, the next one I'm definitely going to uh, go try is the the Kona coffee. But if you guys have any recommendations or anything like that, feel free to let me know. As long as it's not some, some like, oh, the expensive shit. Um, yeah, let me know. Oh, something something else which I, I found fascinating was a uh, common misconception about the caffeine content in coffee. The, uh, you know, everybody thinks, like, the dark roast... Um, you know, dark, heavy, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know what it's called. Just like dark roast, I guess. Like that those coffees necessarily have more caffeine than a light roast or a medium roast, but that's not necessarily the case. Um, it's actually usually the opposite unless you're actually weighing the, the coffee. So if you weigh, for example, a pound of, uh, light roast and a pound of dark roast, then and only then does the dark roast have more caffeine within that pound per uh as, as opposed to the light roast uh because it's a lot denser but if you like most people like i do um you just you know measure by scoops like a couple scoops um the uh the light roast will actually have more more caffeine in it because it's it's denser or whatever like whichever one means that it weighs more denser i forget um which is which but um yeah light roast is supposed to have like more caffeine than than dark roast when you're just doing it by scoop uh, as opposed to like actual weight so i found that interesting and that's pretty much it on that aside from that what else is up the oh i signed up for the five borough tour which, if you guys don't know, is like a a marathon in New York City for uh, bike riders or whatever people that want to ride bike that on that day. And um, I signed up for it. I did it last year for the first time with my buddy Pablo. And it was pretty dope. Shout out to Pabs, by the way. Um, but yeah, it was pretty dope. They, It's a 45-mile bike run. And they close like bridges and and um, like certain streets and highways and stuff like that, which obviously aren't accessible day to day. And not just like the bike path, but like you're in the actual like middle of, you know, like where the cars normally drive, like crossing a bridge and, um, uh, you know, different streets like uh, they normally wouldn't ride down unless you're like in the, like the bike path lane. And it's pretty cool. You see like a lot of shit in the city that you normally wouldn't see um because you normally like drive or drive by or whatever like if any of you like i compare it to when you drive somewhere or you walk somewhere and you notice like the little you know weird store they never saw before never noticed was there before but it's been there for fucking 30 years or something like that and just like different houses and people and um, different areas of your neighborhood and other neighborhoods that 
you know, you, when you're driving, you're not, you know, busy sightseeing and shit, so, that you miss. So, it's another, another way to see the city, see New York City, and it's pretty dope, you know, get some exercise in, much needed for me, and it's pretty cool, so, um, gearing up towards that, uh, which is in about four weeks, it's like that first Sunday in May. So I'm going up with my my boy, um, uh, like training for it, pretty much, um, and you know going out doing some some runs, and logging in some miles. It went uh, last week was my second week. We went the week before that. We went to Forest Park in Queens, and uh, I did like 10.99 miles, because um, I didn't feel like like pushing the extra point zero <laughs> zero one of a mile to make it an even 11. Um, and uh, last week we went to the West West Side Highway and um, we did like half of that going from, from like Dykeman down to like close to like the Intrepid where like the ship museum thing is and and back and that uh, uh, clocked in like 16 16 miles 16.10 if I'm not mistaken and uh, going out uh, again this coming up weekend and hopefully every weekend in the next three weekends uh, before before the actual marathon so wish me luck on that I'll um, uh, keep you guys posted let you know how that goes and actually uh, you know I'll take pictures and shit like that like I normally do I actually took a few that I keep forgetting to add to to the website um, from uh, this past weekend when I went to to the West Side Highway. Got a dope picture of the uh, like the George Washington Bridge. There's like a like on the bike path, um, like right next to the bike path. Is, there's like no like railings in certain areas, and you know just like the rocks and the fucking the water. Uh, so I like went a little bit into that and got like a, a dope, pretty dope pick at a at a cool angle on my on my phone though, um, you know, not like on a on a legit camera or anything like that. So uh, it's not probably not the best quality, but uh, it's a dope picture nonetheless, in my opinion. I'm gonna add it to the site and you guys can take a look at them, download them if you want. Uh, I think it's like three pictures that uh, I think were site worthy <laughs> and. That's, uh, oh, I already put them on my Instagram, actually, at spun today, S-P-U-N today, if you guys want to check those out. Um, but I'll add it to the website also at spuntoday.com forward slash photography. And that's pretty much it. Uh, now the story, the, now this story is called Nostranev. I decided to name it Nostranev, um, just cause that's one of the, the train stations, that I pass by on a daily basis, like in my commute, like to and from work, um, and I don't know. Out of all, I felt like picking one of the, one of the stations that I normally pass by, and out of all the stations, I decided on that one because the name sounded cooler to me or whatever. Um, it, but it's uh, the story is based uh, very lo- very very loosely based on something that I did witness, which was. Uh, which actually happened on Rockaway Ave um, in Queens on the A-Line. I was uh, getting off the train one day and, you know, there was like shouting and screaming and stuff like that. And, then, you know, like a, like a crowd, like assembling, like right by like the stairs where you like exit from. And I come down the stairs and there's like a bunch of cops coming in and, you know, people with uh, like the cell phones out filming it and this girl screaming and like arguing and, you know, cops and shit. So, um, like everybody else, I just, I <laughs> started looking and, um, like every other nosy New Yorker and, um, pretty much it was this, this cop, um, who had, uh, this girl like handcuffed and she was like, like bleeding a little bit. And he was like, uh, like roughing her up, but like she was there with other people and, and, uh, it was just like a chaotic looking situation. Like I obviously have no idea like what happened beforehand, but like she was like kicking and screaming and, and, um, and literally 
that there was like by the end of it there was like at least 15 different uniformed officers there without exaggeration and um uh like trying to like calm the situation and and it was pretty hectic you know those people like screaming um she she was uh she kept saying uh he's lying he's lying um i guess like like uh i don't know i don't know whatever, whatever you could derive from that um it's all guessing games at this point from what i saw and um this was this was a while ago this was months ago um but what i did do was was uh i recorded some audio like from it um i don't know why uh, but i did and i actually used that audio as some of the background noise in the in the short story that you guys are about to listen to so i guess it uh, it wound up being for that purpose and uh uh you could kind of hear like in the piece that i used you could kind of hear like the girl in the background like screaming he's lying um again i, I put it like kind of like low and made it like the ambient noise um a little bit but um you guys could hear like the crowd and shit like that and uh kind of get a sense for the situation but it was um it was sick to see you know just fucking on your way home i need business and you see some like crazy shit like that and that is pretty much it but from from that incident i uh wrote this story uh this short story which is um to me kind of like you know it's based on an altercation like that which didn't end obviously the way the way that this story ends and i'm not gonna uh spoil it for you guys but um uh, but like in the true story i wound up leaving leaving after a couple minutes and they stayed there but they seemed to have the situation under control and they were like walking her i guess out towards the uh like the paddy wagon or whatever that they had outside and um the story is completely different <laughs> uh but it's based on that based on that incident it's based on an altercation between um a young african american female and and uh a white cop um at least that's what i got from it uh with the like all the recent like police brutality and violence and um just like fucked up shit that you you've been hearing all over the news from like douchebag cops and just not necessarily douchebag cops just just shitty people you know what i mean because it's not it's not just cops it's not just minorities it's not um it's not like either or it's just like if there's a generalization to be made it all has to do with just shitty people <clears throat> and um uh just shit people that made make fucked up decisions which kind of like tie into each other in my opinion um but whatever the story kind of kind of was born from both that uh those types of situations uh that have been coming up or coming out to light now and um this incident that that i witnessed and there was actually what's today there was an incident today april 8th um of another another police shooting i think in like north carolina or south carolina um that i i only heard uh or read um headlines on so i have absolutely nothing um on the on the like that story or anything like that but it's just it's sick how shit like that just keeps coming up um but yeah that is that is what the story is about and where it came from and um you guys let me know let me know what you think about it and aside from that uh before we move on to actually listening to it oh by the way it's like it's a it's really short i think it's like 14 minutes long from beginning to end so it's short listen to it <laughs> and uh try to enjoy it let me know what you guys think you can comment as always directly on in the comment section of the short story if you go to spuntoday.com forward slash short stories forward slash no string to have you can read this particular story or just go to the short stories page on sponsoraday.com and you guys can just click on notion have it's uh the first story at the top anyway so right when you go there you're gonna see it 
in case you want to read along um, and or comment and or share the story. Also, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Spun Today, S-P-U-N Today. Uh, like the Facebook fan page, facebook.com forward slash Spun Today. Uh, also, there's a YouTube page where you can listen to this and all podcasts, um, all 17 of them now, um, on the YouTube page. To get to that link, uh, you know, you can just search in YouTube uh, for Spun Today or at the very bottom, like the footnote section of my website, you can click on the YouTube I- icon and it'll take you to the YouTube page. Also, I added, um, as of two or three episodes ago, I just keep forgetting to mention it to you guys, I uh, mentioned, I, uh, added, uh, a spun today Tumblr page, um, Tumblr, I'll be completely honest with you guys. I've never used, I just, uh, decided to set one up for the, um, spun today podcast just to have an, another outlet for you guys, for the listeners, uh, that might be into Tumblr. To be honest, I have no idea what the site's about. I hear that it's popular. Um, I guess it's like a blog site or something, but whatever. If you All these episodes are, will also be available on there um, as of like two or three episodes ago. So this one definitely is on there um, if you guys want to check that out. And it's easier for you guys to listen that way, then by all means, please do. And you can find that page at Spun Today Podcast dot tumblr dot com and tumblr is spelled t u m b l r uh for any of you guys that don't use it uh just like i don't aside from posting this stuff and that's pretty much it guys without further ado here is no string dive no string dive by tony ortiz written march 22nd 2015 Henry woke up and went through his morning routines as quietly as possible so that he wouldn't wake Dolores, but no luck. As usual, she barely got any sleep the night before. Too busy worrying. He graduated the academy barely six months ago and has a late night to early morning shift during his patrol. Did you put your vest on? she asked. I did, babe. Don't worry, he responded. You know I can't stop worrying until after you're home. And still, hours later, you're gone again, said Dolores. Come here, babe, he told her as he sat down at the side of the bed. I won't be on this shift for too much longer. Once I hit the one-year mark, I'll be able to put in for a transfer, Henry told her. The next six months can't pass soon enough, she replied. Be safe out there and call me every chance you get. Will do, babe. I love you try and get some sleep. Out he went to his post where he met up with his partner. Martinez, he greeted his partner. What's up, brother? He responded. Not much, said Henry. Here, got your coffee. Who's better than you? Thanks, man, responded Martinez. The lieutenant wants us covering the A-line and walking the perimeter of some of the red zone stations. Okay, cool. Lead the way, responded Henry. You'll like it. Ride some trains, look at the pretty ladies going to work, bullshit on the platforms. Easy money, said Martinez. On the other side of town, Tracy was being woken up for school by her loving mother. Wake up, you fat, lazy bitch, yelled Miss Walker. Mom, what the fuck? I'm up. Damn. Why you always gotta be so damn loud? Tracy responded. This my house. I'll be as loud as I want, she responded. You ain't gonna wind up like me. Footnote number one. Tracy's father was an abusive alcoholic who left three days shy of her second birthday, leaving them without notice and with bills upon debt. He's the one that drove Tiffany Walker to drink, and those are the only remnants he left behind. She continued while taking a sip of her morning cocktail. Gin and Sunny Delight. I hope not, Tracy said with an attitude. Don't make me slap the shit out of you. Get your fat ass up and go to school. As she was leaving the house for her hour and a half commute, she asked her mom for some money for the train. 
Where the fuck is your school metro card? I lost it, Tracy responded. Well, that sounds like a personal issue, said Miss Walker. How am I supposed to get to school? Tracy asked. Figure it out. And what you need to do is stop eating them damn candy bars and get you an apple. That's why you look like that, commented Miss Walker. Whatever, Tracy said as she walked out and slammed the door. Tracy walked over to the Notion Avenue A-line. She went downstairs and pretended to buy a metro card at the machine, waiting for both the attendant to become distracted and for her train to approach the platform so she could try and hop the turnstiles. Officer Martinez was taking a 15-minute jaw break. Henry was there, but she didn't notice him because he was a bit off to the side and on his phone texting his wife. Everything has gone smooth today, babe, and my shift will be over soon. Love you. Announcement. There will be a downtown bound A train approaching the station in approximately two minutes. Tracy looks around to assess the situation while more passengers swipe through the turnstiles. The rumblings of the approaching train begin to crescendo as her heart rate elevates in unison. She's not the most athletic girl and hasn't really tried anything like this since she was a kid and her mom used to make her duck down underneath the turnstiles. She fumbles it, telegraphed her intent to the attendant, who sounded the alarm before she began to hoist herself up and over. Henry quickly ran over to meet her on the other side. Officer! Officer! The attendant yells as he steps out of the booth to point Tracy out. It was her! Arrest her! I ain't do nothing, says Tracy. Excuse me, ma'am. Do you have some ID? Henry asks, remembering that his training advises he should always identify first. No, I ain't got no license. I'm 16 and I'm in school, Tracy responded. I'm going to have to ask you to come with me and sit over here then, ma'am. We're creating a bit of traffic, said Henry. Tracy, sizing up the officer who was about her height and much thinner, says, I told you I ain't do nothing. And I need to go to school. That man crazy. At this point, the train had come and gone and there were less people around. Arrest her! Give her ticket! shouted the attendant. Fuck you, asshole. Tracy shouted back at him. You mother bitch you, says the man. Henry is calling in this escalating situation on his radio to alert his partner. This is the first time that he's alone and dealing with something like this. Sir, Henry tells the attendant, I'm going to have to ask you to please go back into your booth and let me do my job. The attendant was visibly upset, but he obliged. You gonna make me miss my next train too, officer? Shoot, I got a quiz first period. Ma'am, I want to get you on your way as soon as possible, but I need you to work with me. You're getting a citation for jumping the train, he says as he pulls out his summons booklet. So I need you to cooperate and give me your full name, date of birth, and address, Henry stated. What's that? A ticket? Tracy asked. It's a summons. You will receive a court date in the mail to which a parent or legal guardian will have to accompany you and pay a fine, responded Henry. Oh my God, are you serious? She said with with her throat nodding up and a tear swelling up in the corner of her left eye. That man is lying. Why you only believe him? You know what my mama will do to me if I get in trouble here? Says Tracy. Ma'am, this will go a lot faster if you cooperate. Announcement. There will be a downtown bound express A train approaching the station in approximately four minutes. You hear that? Do you want to make that train or do you want to miss your quiz and have your mom upset about that? Asks Henry. Man, I ain't even going to take the damn train then, says Tracy as she stands up and begins towards the exit. Ma'am, you're not free to go, says Henry as he reaches for the wrist on her right hand. Get off me. Get your hands off me. She yells, calling even more attention to the situation. Henry gets in front of her, and she slaps the summons booklet from his left hand. And she tries to run for the emergency exit door next to the turnstiles, but the attendant disabled it. Henry grabs her by the arm and reaches for his cuffs. She's hysterical, screaming and crying, pulling her hands away as he's trying to restrain her up against the exit door. I can't get in trouble. I didn't do anything. Leave me alone. Stop it. Stop it. She knocks his handcuffs down. 
Henry's protocol now allows him to enact force. He reaches for his club and she begins flailing her arms frantically. She accidentally hits his firearm and removes the safety clip on his holster. Henry hits her on the leg with his club to try to get her to the ground. Several people on the platform have begun recording this on their phones while chiming in. Leave her alone. She ain't doing nothing. This is abuse. You can't hit her. Get her his badge number. This is brutality. Henry's reacting to everything nervously, and Tracy's crying and shouting aren't helping. He hits her with the club again as she drops to the ground and the crowd gets even more rowdy. He grabs the cuffs and is able to get one on her right wrist. The attendant is on the phone with 911, reporting the incident, and more units are on the way, including Martinez, who's nearby. Tracy continues to kick and scream wildly, and winds up scratching Henry in the face, who's having obvious trouble restraining her. Martinez makes his way downstairs and is running over as Tracy hits Henry in the nose. He instinctually draws his weapon. It slips and he drops the gun. Tracy and him both go for it instinctively. One of their fingers is on the trigger and it goes off. Martinez, close enough now to witness this, draws his firearm as well. He sees his partner clenching his waist side and falling backwards. Tracy is screaming nervously and still holding onto Henry's gun. Without hesitation, Martinez unloads five shots at her torso, fatally wounding the high schooler. Within 24 hours, Dolores is weeping bedside in the post-op hospital room, while half a dozen of his brothers in blue, including Martinez, are in the waiting area, waiting for Henry to wake up. Two uniformed officers were sent over to Tracy's home to inform her family of what happened. Miss Walker all but attacked the officers as she broke down crying. You killed my baby. You killed my little girl. No. No. You sons of bitches. When are you going to leave us alone? You evil devils. Ma'am, we're deeply sorry for your loss, said one of the officers as he was able to get a word in edgewise. She was a good girl. Jesus, why? She continued. Mrs. Walker. It's Ms. Walker, you no good piece of shit. She responded. Here's the address to the hospital where you need to go and claim your daughter. We can take you there if you'd like. I don't want nothing from you. I can take myself. She responded. Okay. Well, here's our card. Contact us when you're sobered up if you'd like to make a statement. He said. Fuck you. I ain't drunk. Get out of my home. Get out, Miss Walker responded. Several months later, a woman walks into her neighborhood police precinct in her Sunday church dress right after that morning service. She engages an irritated police officer that's working the front desk. He seems to be angry at life, and she can smell alcohol on his breath as he speaks. Yes, ma'am. How can I help you? Officer Henry Kurth asked the woman. Hello, sir. My name is Tiffany Walker, and I wanted to get a list of all of the after-school community centers in the area, she requested. It's been several months, and although he still had nightmares of the incident, he didn't make the connection as to who this woman was right away. All of the community centers in our jurisdiction are posted over on that bulletin board over there, he responded as he lacklusterly pointed at a cork board by the entrance. Oh, okay, thank you, responded Miss Walker. Do you happen to have a sheet of paper and a pen I can borrow to jot down the names and phone numbers? Hold on, he responded grumpily. Henry rolled his wheelchair out from under his desk and rolled over to the supply drawer to grab a legal pad and pen. Here you go, he said as he handed them over to her. Thank you kindly, officer. Henry Kurth, is it? That's right, Henry said as she walked over to the bulletin board. He looks at the nameplate on his desk, wondering how she knew his first name, because the name tag on his uniform only shows his last name. The nameplate on his desk reads P.O. Kurth. He looks up at her while she's jotting down some of the information, and she starts to look familiar. He makes the connection remembering her name from the loads of paperwork for the Tracy Walker case. 
He's immediately suspicious as to why she's here, feeling that there has to be an ulterior motive. She walks back over to his desk and hands him over the legal pad and pen after ripping out the two sheets she used. Smiling, she says, Thank you, Officer Kurth. I'm going to give this information to my pastor. See if we can get these kids engaged in some positive activities after school so that we can avoid the inexcusable harassment that has been going on. We do our best to service the productive members of our community, such as yourself, Miss Walker, Henry responded. As she was about to turn away and leave, Tiffany says, I almost forgot. I got something for you. She reaches into her purse, and Henry tenses up for half a second. I reckon you'll be needing this more than I ever did. She pulled out a stainless steel liquor flask and places it right in front of him on his desk. He stares at it and says nothing. She stops smiling and leaves. Um, back. <laughs> What's up, guys? I uh, hope you guys like the story. Or... Um, I don't know, got something from it, enjoyed it, or, or, or didn't, and have some constructive criticism to throw my way. Um, what I want to do is, also, I haven't done this for any of the other stories, and I should, because, I mean, I guess I wasn't being, like, objective about it, uh, about these stories, uh, that I've, uh, shared with you guys in the past, because, um, they're, like, I don't know, like, new to me in terms of, you know, like, creating them and actually, like, putting them together and writing stories. You know, I've only done, this is, like, my sixth one, sixth short story. Um, But I thought it it would be a good idea to share with you guys what the story meant to me. And maybe I'll do that, you know, maybe I'll go back and you know, do an episode breaking down each story uh, thus far just to have them all... Um like on the same page uh, in terms of of giving the same type of feedback but because something that I've mentioned before that I heard on Brian Callen's podcast and I'm so pissed uh Brian Callen's podcast by the way is uh, the Brian Callen show um I'm so pissed that I do not remember which author uh said this on there uh which writer uh said this but it made so much sense to me and I've said it tons of times after that and i can't give him credit unfortunately um but i want to say it's robert green robert green but um don't quote me on that um but i'm sure a lot of uh you guys feel the same way he said um that art any type of art whether it's writing uh, or or you know music or whatever but um but this guy he he was an author so he was talking about writing. Once you put it out there, it's no longer yours. And everyone has the right to interpret whatever that is in their own way. Um, that maybe the the author uh, himself or herself didn't even intend to put out, put out or put forth in that type of way you know what I mean like you could get something from this story that would make me be like oh shit I didn't even I didn't even look at it like that and I wrote it <laughs> you know what I mean um and vice versa um sometimes like I feel that I put stuff in there and I picked this up from a conversation with my fiance actually when I asked her about like the ending of Ball and Chain which is the uh l- last I think it's the last or the one before the last um, short story there, or whatever. It's one of the short stories on the site. It's called Ball and Chain, like the ending for it. I asked her if she thinks that the girl, spoiler alert, if you haven't listened to it or read it, um, then you're fucked. So go pause this now and go listen to it or don't. Um, but whatever, I asked her if she thinks that the girl, the protagonist in the story, if she, or is she the protagonist? Whatever, like the main character chick in the story. If she killed the correction officer guy at the end, which me writing the story like that was what 
I intended to to um to show like with the ending. The ending was that she was riding uh the red Mustang and going towards Florida. <clears throat> like she was uh, running away to Florida. Um and she had all the stuff that she needed in the trunk and some of the stuff she no longer needed in the scent proof compartment. My what I like in my the way I envisioned it is that she killed the dude and, you know, had his dead body in that um scent proof compartment and um and you know, she's heading to Florida, has everything that she needs in the trunk. Um and that's it. And she's alone in the car and it's his car. So that was kind of like what, what I intended that ending to mean. Um, but she, she told me that the way that she read it, she like interpreted it completely differently and didn't think that she killed him at all and that she was just headed to Florida or whatever. So that just made me think like, Oh shit, you know, um, and it made me reconnect with, uh, what that author said, which is that, that, you know, once you put something out there, people get different shit from it then read it differently and look at it differently. So I wanted to um, make it a point of after these short stories, instead of just wrapping up quickly with um, an outro and telling you guys to fucking uh, donate and shop through Amazon <laughs> through my link. Um, excuse me. Maybe I should tell you guys what uh, the story means to me and what what um, I was trying to say with it. And just see if, you know, that highlights it highlights certain things maybe to you guys that you guys didn't notice or if if um there's something that you guys can comment to me and uh let me know uh what you guys got from it or what you guys saw in certain characters or what resonated with you or um maybe something that i missed because i wrote it but you know there's shit in there that like i said you interpret it differently and um then maybe i'm just not looking at it from the same uh, vantage point the same angle which to me is one of the coolest parts of writing and um, just creating anything in general, I would imagine. Um, but for me specifically, just like like writing. Um, and that's pretty cool. So, all right, basically, the like like I said in the in the intro, this is a story to me about uh, an escalating situation and. Um, an escalating avoidable situation that where like I try to write it in the way that you see why the two main characters were acting the way that they were. Um, the police officer was, uh, seemed like, a you know, he had like not a cookie cutter type of lifestyle, but, um, the way I envision him is like this clean cut, um, you know, straight edge, you know, straight arrow type of, uh, person, everything by the book. Um, not necessarily like a hard ass, uh, type of cop. Um, but kind of like a good person that was just trying to, um, do his job and, um, do things by the book and, and kind of, kind of like, a like sheltered a little bit. Um, I envisioned like his background, like even before he became a cop, uh, like being, and, and that's how I envisioned him. And then the, uh, the girl in the story, Tracy, she, uh, came from a dysfunctional broken home, um, who's, uh, mother was an alcoholic and pretty much took out all of her, um, the mother took out her, like, shit that she resented, um, uh, that she never became, um, out on her daughter, but kind of like in a tough love sort of way. And she, she didn't know any other way to, to make her, uh, become better than her, but to show her that tough love, but she like really did love her daughter and um she her her husband left her and and the baby when the baby was like two or three years old and the husband was an alcoholic and uh abusive as well and uh she pretty much drove the mother um tiffany to drink 
and become an alcoholic and it all stemmed from like that broken fucked up uh dysfunctional relationship which she in turn like poured onto uh the little girl um who then kind of like projected that type of negative uh confrontational style that she's used to that she's uh, brought up with uh to the other authority figure that she encountered in the police officer at the train station at uh Nostrand Ave. and then uh one thing led uh to the other and the situation continued to to escalate and uh you know she projected uh, those types of of things onto onto the police officer that like negativity and that kind of like that bravado that um that just the, like the confrontational shit that she was used to at home that she was brought up with and then the officer countered that with his inexperience and and um a little bit of of ego in terms of you know trying to to what's the word i'm looking for trying to fuck what's the word what's the word um some fucking writer right (laughs) i can't even think uh, of the word i'm trying to explain the trying to like not instill but trying to like put his foot down and kind of like like affirm that's what i was looking for trying to affirm his authority on the situation um coupled with that inexperience and the fact that um he's witnessing this type of situation for the first time um in terms of you know having to handle, handle it alone because of the fact that his partner which is a more seasoned kind of uh like the like the cool cop that's uh you know doing this like for a paycheck kind of thing and um you know does his job but slacks off and he's out chilling somewhere you know taking a shit or something and taking his time and um kind of sees the like the benefits from like his partner martinez he benefits from this sit like how do I explain it? He's a he's the type of cop that doesn't mind being in, you know, like a speed trap patrol car or something like that because he knows he could sleep for a couple hours. You know what I mean? Like like the one that'll take you get you give him give him a finger, he'll take he'll take your arm type of thing. You know, he'll take advantage of the situation, like that type of cop. Um uh, but that isn't necessarily like a bad guy, and um, you know he's there. He's there for, for his partner. Um, you know after the situation happens, after after he gets shot accidentally, um, which to me uh, was an accident. You know, it was just a, a result of of the two being nervous, both Tracy and Officer uh, Henry being nervous. And, um, you know, just, you know, over, you know, going for the gun and, and he got shot, unfortunately. And then, um, Martinez, you know, just about, you know, having to do that split second, uh, evaluation of a situation. He hears a gun go off. He sees his, his, his partner going down. He sees the girl screaming as she has the gun and she's kind of like waving it, um, out of nervousness, but, but she has the gun in hand. His partner just got shot, um. He, to defuse the situation, winds up fatally shooting Tracy. And it's all a situation that came from the uh, both the parenting that was instilled or the parenting of, of Tracy's mother and, like, the, the life she was brought up in. And what that projected onto uh, the confrontation and situation, how she handled that situation with the cop, as well as the cop's um inexperience and his his lifestyle and upbringing um matching up and clashing with with tracy's in in a way that obviously um didn't have a positive outcome for either either of them tracy dies in the story and officer henry gets shot and um suffers some sort of some sort of like spinal injury and um is paralyzed from the waist down um which is why at the end the uh he you know pulls out he has a desk job now that his 
very caring and loving, but um, uh, not but because it's not not a negative thing to be a caring and loving wife, but kind of like that, uh, like that. You know when when like a parent or something like that they like care too much and it's not necessarily like like um like luanyonyang kind of you know it's not it's doesn't have like it's a great thing but it 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 it's not constructive not fully constructive you know what I mean it's good to love but not don't don't baby them um so the wife kind of like oh it's like pushing and nagging about the you know get at that job and i'm scared and i'm worried and stuff like that which is all coming from a good positive place um but it's kind of like be careful what you wish for kind of thing because now he does have that desk job but he has it because he got shot in that incident and now is in a wheelchair and that's the only job that he can do um at the precinct and then the entire negative fucked up situation all around wound up having a uh, little silver lining in that uh, the mother, the alcoholic mother, Tiffany, she found, she found God, found church, um, found something that she can emotionally dive into and fill the void that the alcohol, the fucking, what would I give her her drink of choice? It's like vodka and like Sunny Delight or like gin, I think, and Sunny Delight. I try to think of like the nastiest, like cheapest sounding um, uh, drink that I could think of because um, I've known I, I used to bartend when I was younger and then I've known like some alcoholics and they drink like weird like concoctions. And it's usually like speed rack fucking vodka with with fucking grape juice or fucking like some weird shit, grapefruit juice or something. Um, and so I tried to think of like some weird, nasty combination like that. And I came up with gin and Sunny Delight, <laughs> um, which actually might not be too bad. I'm not knocking you. If that's your thing, you know, do you enjoy take a shot and uh, take a shot every time I say it, um, and be twisted by the end of this. Um, but yeah, she, f- that's a uh, silver lining. She, she, you know, gave up, gave up the, the liquor for church and found God and is a productive member of her church community and trying to help, uh, other kids that are in the streets or, or, or might be, um, in like remembering her daughter and, and I guess wishing like everything that she couldn't do for her daughter, um, while she was like all fucked up and, and, um, under the influence and shit, she's now trying to to do with the youth that uh, is in her community that goes to church and stuff like that, like helping out the the church and the pastor. And she kind of sorta gets her form of revenge with the not with Martinez, which actually took her her daughter's life, but with the guy that caused it, the officer that caused it, which is. Uh, officer henry by what she saw as just harassment and like odin uh with her daughter and um she kind of sort of gets her like sweet revenge at the end in uh one realizing that you know he's paralyzed in a wheelchair and it's kind of like that's his like karma a little bit um but she she smells like alcohol in his breath and uh, realizes that he's you know drowning in his sorrows and all fucked up and um gives she gives uh symbolically she gives him her flask or a flask uh just to kind of say here motherfucker you know here's the rope hang yourself um and kind of doesn't like that cold cold way that um it's kind of like closure for her a little bit and then just uh, goes off and continues to to do her thing with the church and shit like that so um yeah that's pretty much it that's my fucking synopsis of the story that's what what 
I don't know, my intentions, I guess, of the story were, or that's what, after it was written, I got from it, um, or how I interpreted everything, uh, both after the, after the fact and while I was putting it together. And um, let me know what you guys think. I'm, I'm, I'm curious now to see if everybody has the same type of, um, uh, I don't know, like feedback and interpretation of it. You know, not that this is like some deep shit or anything like that and has like multiple levels to it. Again, what I just said is what I intended it to be and what I think it is. Um, but you guys, whatever, tell me, tell me what you think. And that's pretty much it, guys. That is the episode. I just want to quickly tell you guys about a few uh, places to to go to to help support the podcast and um and uh, help support me on this entire on this whole just like journey through through um, writing and developing and and podcasting and stuff like that. So first things first, where everything is, where everything is located is my website spun today.com s p u n t o d a y today uh dot com there at the bottom you will find links to my twitter page which is at spun today my instagram page which is at spun today my facebook page which is uh forward slash spun today uh also the tumblr page which is spun today podcast dot tumblr dot com my YouTube page, where you can listen to all of these podcasts, as um, aside from you know the normal iTunes and Stitcher that you guys can listen on. Please uh, subscribe on the YouTube page as well. Um, this way, whenever I post one of these things, uh, you guys will be notified. Also, sign up to the newsletter. Uh, you guys can sign up to new- the newsletter on the Facebook page or on the website on the contact page. All the way at the bottom, there's an option to sign up for the newsletter. You guys can do that too. That'll be cool. And the uh, best way to support the podcast financially uh, that does not cost you a dime is to do any and all of your Amazon shopping uh, using the portal on my website. So go to spuntoday.com forward slash contact or just click on the contact page when you get to spuntoday.com. And click on the Amazon banner, which is at the the center top of the page. And that'll take you to Amazon where you do your shopping like normal. And um, anything you purchase does not cost you anything extra. Amazon just kicks back a few pennies on the dollar just for driving traffic towards their website. Uh, That would be awesome if you guys want to do that. Another way where you can support the podcast and the best way you could support the podcast is by helping you gain exposure aside from letting your uh, friends and family or coworkers or whoever know about the podcast if you like it or uh, fellow writers or anything like that uh, you could uh, go on itunes and or stitcher and rate and review the podcast and uh, help you gain exposure that way the more rates and reviews that it has the higher it climbs up them charts and the higher it is on the charts the uh, more people are exposed to it, and the more people listen, and um, and it'll be pretty dope. Um, another thing you can do, uh, lastly, to not bore you guys anymore, is to go on a website called Created. Um, if you guys like any of the photography, which which uh, is posted on the website on um, the, in the photography section uh, for free, if you guys want to, you know, just like download the digital copy of them um or or on instagram or on the facebook page also you can go to created.com forward slash spun today created is c-r-a-t-e-d and um check out uh that website that's a collection of every and all of the pictures that i have posted and you guys can actually order um prints uh like posters and and canvases and like frames and shit like that of any of the, th- of the photography if you guys want to um that would be pretty dope too and that's pretty much it guys that's the episode for the week i'll check you guys out in another couple weeks i put these things out every other thursday and um hope you guys enjoy and continue listening i really appreciate it uh lastly but not leastly as always substitute the mysticism with hard work 
and start taking steps in the general direction of your dreams. Thanks for listening.